This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and hey, it's a Chromebook. This is the HP Chromebook X360 G1, specifically for the model number, and it's one of those Chromebooks that goes for a little classiness. This is not meant for K through 12, kids' schools, that sort of thing. So this is for businesses and also just for any old person who wants a Chromebook with a little bit nicer build. We have a nice aluminum casing on here, 360 degree hinges, and a full HD IPS touchscreen that's glossy. Now it doesn't support an active pen, so if you're hoping for that, you don't get that here. But the rest is pretty interesting, including the horsepower inside. We're gonna look at it now. So like I said, though the list prices might be high on this as Pro Chromebooks go, it's not that bad. This is no Google Pixel book or something like that in terms of pricing. So you can start with an Intel Pentium, but that's not the interesting story here. You can get this with an Intel 8th Gen Core i3, Core i5, or Core i7 CPU. We actually have the Core i7 CPU inside. And so prices range from around $626 for Core i3 right now on HP's website because they're having a sale, but they so often do that. Let's just go with that price for right now. Goes up to $796 if you want a Core i5. And then the Core i7 just adds a whole lot of pain. You can see on screen just how much more money that, that adds on. So you're getting into $1,200 for a Chromebook. Uh, I don't know. You have to really love Chrome OS to do that. Most configurations have eight gigs of RAM, though. HP does list an option bundled with a Core i7 for 16 gigs of RAM, and this is soldered on, by the way, but this kind of overkill 16 gigs of RAM for Chrome OS. And as usual, it has slow eMMC storage, not as fast as an SSD by any means, but that's what, how Chromebooks roll, and you get 64 gigs of storage, which seems a little light, you know, given the more premium nature of this laptop. But then again, with Chrome OS, most of this stuff is stored in the cloud anyway other than the actual apps that you install so that's not too bad. So this is a 360 degree 14 inch laptop so yes if you're running Android apps for example where the keyboard is really more of a nuisance than anything else you can just swivel it and get it out of the way. You can draw with your finger too it's a touch screen but there is no active pen like I said so this isn't for anybody who's a budding artist or particularly looking for note-taking experience beyond a capacitive stylus which isn't the greatest experience. Android apps are getting better on Chrome OS, and particularly if you have a faster CPU. If you're really into the Android apps, I do recommend that. It, it has to do with the optimization, all that sort of thing. I mean, obviously you've got a Core i5 inside, you think you can kick the pants off of any mid-range Android phone, but not always so much. But games like Shadowgun Legends that you can see me playing, I mean, it was actually playable, and I've seen Core i5 Chromebooks where that still wasn't the case. Very good performance. And alternatively, running a bunch of tabs, having a YouTube video, Video playing in one tab, doing Google Docs with a rich document and a couple of other tabs open, and it doesn't skip a beat. So the performance here is really nice. And again, it's tailored more towards those of you who are doing more serious work with, with Chrome OS and not K through 12 kind of work, so you can do a lot. Obviously, it is still Chrome OS. You can run your Android apps, assuming compatibility. The touch screen does help with that, certainly. And everything else is going to happen in a browser tab, pretty much. So there are limits for those of you who still aren't sure if a Chromebook is for you. If you need full Adobe Photoshop, obviously not so much. But if most of what you do do it can be accomplished in a web browsing tab or with an Android app, then yeah, maybe. Like most Chromebooks, it's not particularly light. I guess it goes with the non-premium, don't make it super duper expensive experience. Yes, it's aluminum clad, but yes, it weighs 3.7 pounds, which is 1.68 kilograms. It's pretty slim looking. It's got a nice taper on the edge. It feels premium. There's no flex on the chassis. If you want to get to the internals, which really isn't so much of a thing with Chromebooks, especially because you got EMMC slow storage, you have soldered RAM, all that sort of thing, and then it's the usual HP passive aggressive kind of thing where you got to pull off the rubber strip strips and you got to remove some little rubber plugs at the bottom and you get the idea. Ports on this aren't bad. You have a USB-A, you have two USB-C. One of those will be used for charging because it does come with a USB-C based charger. You have a headphone jack of course and a micro SD card slot as well. The keyboard is backlit. It's kind of low travel. For something that isn't incredibly uber skinny, I was a little bit surprised. It's okay. It's not one of my favorite keyboards but it's, it's decent. And as usual with Chrome OS, trackpad experience is very good. You have multi-touch gestures and all that sort of nice stuff. 
Now the display on this, on the one hand, it's nice to see an IPS display that's pretty sharp looking. I remember the days when Chromebooks just had nasty TN panels still, so that's an improvement. But the color gamut on this is kind of lacking. You can see it playing a YouTube video where I had a very trendy summer tan going on, and it kind of makes me look like old, worn out, I don't know what, shoe leather or something like that. And the vibrancy from my skin is missing. And that call out where we have for the thickness of the device, that's a very bright red, but it looks sort of like a muted autumn tone instead. So color gamut, not very wide on this. Brightness, not super high either. We're looking at the low 200s for nits and brightness. It's fine for indoor low light use, but if you want to use this in very bright environments, that combined with a very glossy display, probably mean this is not the pick for you. The speakers are quite loud. They're Bang & Olufsen branded speakers. Uh, they do distort at the higher volume levels, but it's plenty of loud enough at 50% volume that you probably don't want to be cranking it much higher than that. And battery life on this, Chromebooks typically have good battery life and that not very bright display helps. Now we have the Core i7, which should have the worst battery life. It's the most performant model. 60 watt hour battery here, 45 watt USB-C charger. And we were able to get through a full workday. So that means eight hours of using it for business productivity kind of stuff. If you're doing something a little more hardcore like playing well, like Android games, it's gonna be significantly shorter than that. But if you're doing Google Docs and social networking and all that sort of thing, you could actually go through a whole workday with it, which is pretty darn good. So that's the HP Chromebook X360. It's a 14-inch model. G1 is the first generation of this one. And for those of you who are looking for a nicer than average Chromebook, one that doesn't look plasticky and cheesy, has a pretty large IPS display, has a touch screen, you've got all those things going here. And the price is, you know, it's kind of high. You could certainly get a pretty decently equipped Windows laptop for the same price, but it's not insanely high given the street prices on this. So yeah, if you're into Chrome OS, it's worth a look. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.